but you have to keep going. You literally have to keep going as if your brand is doing these insane numbers when nobody is watching but your cousin, your best friend, and your mom and them. It's very humbling. The bob is bobbing, the bob is bobbing. Good morning, y'all. I was in the middle of doing my hair at the crack bleep of dawn, and I was like, you know what, I don't do enough regular vlogging, showing my regular life, like the everyday stuff. Not just sitting down giving advice, not just doing style videos. Like, what about just the regular me? So I decided, you know, let me just turn the camera on. Let me give you a rundown of my agenda today. I worked out at 5.30. I only worked out for about 30, 40 minutes, and then I uh, hopped in the shower, I washed my hair, now I'm straightening it, and then my mom is coming over at nine o'clock to make sure Gigi is up and ready for the day because I have to go get my makeup done because today I'm gonna speak on a panel. This is my very first panel. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'll be speaking on a panel here in Houston with some other women entrepreneurs. So I'm really excited about this. And if you're wondering why my mom is coming why Jeremiah is not gonna be up, it's because my husband is not a morning person, okay? <laughs> I mean, if he has to, absolutely, he will get up early. But for the most part, he takes the night shift. And if you have a toddler or a baby, you understand how sleep progression goes and how the babies do what they wanna do. But now that Gigi is about to turn two in a couple of weeks, she doesn't have as much um, sleep regression. I mean, she's pretty, she's pretty much been sleep trained since she was like four or five months old. But every now and then she has a rough night. So Jeremiah is responsible for the night shift. I do the morning shift, but since I can't do the morning shift because I got to go do my makeup, my mom's going to come. All right. Just to give random fun facts. I normally don't have a problem doing my makeup, but sometimes I just, I don't know, you know, you just want to sit in a chair and get pampered. Um, since I taught myself how to do my own makeup, we'll do like my every, well, I don't really, I don't even wear makeup every day. I have a love and hate relationship with makeup. I love makeup. I love how it accentuates and enhances your features, but I hate the process of doing it and taking it off. Like doing it, I just, I don't know, I've been wanting to hurry up and get it done, but you have to really take your time when you want a nice foundation, you know, with your skincare, makeup on top, you want it to look good. Ugh. I be wanting to rush through it, but you have to take your time. And then I love the result, but then taking it off, child. I, mm. And I have really sensitive eyes. So anytime it comes to like lashes or just eyeshadow, eyeliner, my eyes, I swear y'all, I get an eye infection at least, at least once every other month. Eye infections just be a part of my life at this point. It's, it's really annoying. And you know I got LASIK, so sometimes people ask me like, oh, are you, do you get a lot of eye infections because of your LASIK? No, it was like this long before I had LASIK. I, I just be getting random eye infections. My eyes are super sensitive. So I've been going to the same makeup artist pretty much since I moved to Houston. Well, not long after I moved to Houston. Since my bridal shower, her name is Robin. And she always does my makeup anytime I have, ooh, anytime I have events, photo shoot, just anything important where I just don't feel like doing my own makeup. Or if I'm not confident that I'm gonna pass that flash test, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'll just book Robin's. I'm trying to hurry up, finish my hair. I'm gonna wrap it, put my little net on, a little doobie wrap and then go straight to Robin when my mom gets here. Okay, let's talk about this panel. I'm really excited. I can't believe I'm gonna be on a panel about entrepreneurship and I feel like I'm still new to this. Like I technically became an entrepreneur, a full-time entrepreneur in October, 2021, but it was by force. It was not my choice. Oh, not my flat iron auto shut off. Have I been in here that long? Side note, uh, it looks a little tight in here because I'm downstairs in the half bath, like when you first walk into the house, that's the garage. Because again, Jeremiah's not a morning person, so I didn't want to be blow drying my hair in our main bathroom where I usually get ready. And then there's another bathroom across from Gigi's room, but I don't know, like the sound machine be on, but I'm like, uh, what if the blow dryer wakes her up? And I don't need her up right now, it's too early. So I came down here and it's just, it's tight. Like I had the door closed, but then when the blow dryer was on, it started getting all foggy and steamy. It was a lot going on. So now I have like this random computer chair here just in case I get tired of standing. I guess I've been in here so long my flat iron turned off. Okay, that's what I was saying. <laughs> and if you don't know, you'll learn. I be having low-key ADD. I switch from topic to topic. So sorry if it's annoying, but hopefully you can just flow with it. Roll with me. So yeah, back to entrepreneurship. I got laid off, if you didn't know, October 2021. I was like five or six months pregnant and... <laughs> devastated because it was right before we were about to close on our house we were only maybe two or three weeks away from closing and if you ever went through the process of like the underwriting process you know with like the loan officer and just trying to secure the loan trying to get your house it's a lot 
and employment verification is very much one-on-one -on -one of the process that's very that's like the basic bare minimum they gotta verify that you got a job and you're gonna pay this money back so to get laid off it was devastating but because i'm one of god's favorites amen i was able to continue my job for the, the next i think two weeks after or just long enough <laughs> For me to uh to pass the the employment verification and i ain't gonna lie y'all i don't know if i've ever said this like publicly but i straight up just dm'd the ceo on linkedin and did i hit him up i was like listen and this my, mind you this is a major company this is a huge company i didn't even think he would answer i never even sent a dm on linkedin before um like well not a dm like on instagram but it's like you know a, a private message never did it before but I was like, I have nothing to lose. Y'all just laid me off. I'm pregnant. I'm not going to get maternity leave. I'm, I might not get this house. I have to reach out and DM this man and let him know, hey, you don't know who you just laid off. For one, I'm about to have a whole baby, my first baby. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. I am freaking out. I didn't say it like that, but this is my mindset. For two, I'm about to get my first home. I'm breaking generational curses. I am the first in my family. Well, not the very first, but not, not a lot of people in my family own homes. I think... I have like one uh, great uncle, he owns his home, then my great grandmother owned her house, but everybody else to this day still rents. Like, home ownership is not a thing in, in, in our lineage, unfortunately. I'm coming from the perspective of, you have no idea what you just did. Laying me off, and of course the CEO, he don't know who he laid off specifically. That man is up on his high horse handling the big stuff, okay? So his pay grade is not to check in on the well-being of the people laid off. You know, that's just not that's just not what happens. And I was working in tech. So layoffs, like working in tech is a very volatile industry. Layoffs happen every day. Okay. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to this man because I'm very passionate about everything I have going on right now. To him, it's just another layoff, but to me, this is like stopping me from breaking generational curses. This is stopping me. And of course, eventually, I knew we were gonna get our, gonna get our house, but if we couldn't get it right now, it could deter our whole journey. It could put us on a totally different trajectory. I, I just had all these thoughts in my mind, like one small decision that y'all made at this company literally can affect people's lives forever, you know, or, or if not forever, at least temporarily set us back. You know what I'm saying? So again, I felt like, what do I have to lose? So I sent that man a private message on LinkedIn. Y'all, do you know he responded? <laughs> I, I gave him my personal email because when you get laid off or you get fired, but I got laid off, but you know, if you get let go, period, from a job, especially in corporate, they shut down your stuff immediately. Like by the end of the business day, after I had that meeting with HR, my manager, child, I was locked out of my accounts. Company email was not working. It's, it's very much bye. <laughs> like nice to meet you. It was nice while it lasted. Here's your severance, bye-bye. Like they kick you out. So I had to send him a message. I gave him my personal email and I was just like, I hope you see this so we can come to some type of uh, compromise, come to an understanding because even if I am only able to work for just two more weeks, literally those 14 days can help me and my family tremendously because when the loan officer does this under, finishes this underwriting process, he will be looking for an employment verification from y'all. So of course I didn't say it in a nasty way i said it in a very stern but professional way and yeah he responded he responded within two hours okay the lord touched his heart the lord moved on my behalf he apologized for you know uh, the abrupt layoff and blah 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 you know he gave some corporate jar jargon and then he said he would love to support me in my journey to first time home home ownership and he cc the hr manager and some other people to basically handle it because <laughs> honey again this is not this is not what his high pay grade does okay this is this is for the peons y'all handle that so he cc them child let me tell you within 24 hours <laughs> my work laptop was back up and running all of my systems everything was back um up normal like i had never gotten laid off my account uh my work email child everything was restored okay and that's that's a word right there because God will restore. He will provide. In, in your worst, darkest moments where you just think, what am I going to do? Maybe God going to step right in on your behalf without you even having to do too much. Me just sending that simple message on LinkedIn, that's an act of faith. And God was like, oh, okay, you believe in me? Watch me work. I don't know who that's for, but I hope that when times of trouble come, you can think, think quick on your feet. Don't get too discouraged. Don't cry too much. Cause I, I'm gonna tell you, I cried. I was pregnant. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember we, we, that was before our dog passed. So I took my dog on a walk. I went to this local park. 
and I sat on a bench and like cried for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I wasn't like sobbing uncontrollably, but I was I was doing a little weep, a little what I'm gonna do, a little what I'm gonna do. I was praying, I was meditating, my dog was looking at me like I was crazy. And after that, honey, I wiped my tears, got right on LinkedIn, handle business. And I think in that moment of just kind of sobbing and praying and just, you know, in deep thought, that's when God placed it on my heart. You need to contact this man. Because see, that, that, that move that I did to contact him, that wasn't me. I'm gonna let you know right now. Cause that's not something I would ever do. I never DM no CEO of no company, especially a CEO that I never that I never met before. So that was God that put that on my heart. And again, once again, he will restore, he will move mountains. So put your trust in him and watch everything you need to come to pass. Side note, I don't like to use too much product when I'm doing my blowouts because my hair is very fine and thin. So too much product will immediately weigh it down. But I do like to spray just a little bit of this weightless coconut oil. You probably see it all the time. I get it from um, Target. But just like two sprays for each section. I, I, I split my hair up in four sections and just do two sprays. I mean, like two or three pumps. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And um, before I even blow dry, I do a heat protectant. Forgot to say that. So I have two different ones that I like best. Uh, oh, here it is. Here's the first one, Tresemme heat protectant. And then the second one is a traditional Chi flat iron spray. I just kind of lightly throw out my hair while it's still damp. And then as I'm flat ironing, I don't really put too much product, but Every so often, when I'm almost done with the section, I'll just spray that oil I just showed you. That gives it like a nice little sheen and keeps it from like having too much flyaways. But yeah, anyway, back to the story, y'all, because clearly I'm just giving some background, giving some fun facts. So I was forced into entrepreneurship October 2021. I decided to go full time with my brand. I was a reseller at the time and I negotiated after the CEO hit me up, you know, when I sent that LinkedIn message. I let the HR manager know because she reached out to me in a separate thread and she was like, how can we support? Uh, and I said, hey, I believe that my home buying process, like we should be able to close on the home within three weeks, maybe two weeks. So if you can just extend my contract up until, you know, I just gave the date, it will work out great. So, and that was me kind of overestimating. I figured we could close in about hmm, 10, 12 days, but you just never know when it comes to the home buying process, how long it's gonna take. So they extended it through maybe in November, like a full month. And child, the employee verification process happened literally maybe seven or eight days later. Once they uh, verified that I was an employee of that company, the way I shut everything down, and I was still getting paid, <laughs> but the way I stopped working, because how y'all gonna lay me off pregnant? Trifling. Now granted, it wasn't personal. Obviously when it comes to layoffs, again, it's tech, it happens. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. And it was a lot of my team. And it wasn't just my team or my department. It was a company-wide layoff. What happened was we did we did an acquisition where our, because it was a starter company. I used to work in tech ed. Think of it as like an umbrella company came in and purchased our, like it was like a merger, but they had the say-so. So they purchased our company. And then these like leaders and board of directors, they had more of a say-so than the original starter company. So they decided to reorganize and restructure everything. And within about a year of the acquisition, that's when the layoff happened. So I don't know, I, I wasn't really mad about the layoff. I was more so paranoid about not getting the house. Like that's all I cared about because I already had my side hustle up and running. If you're new here, I was a reseller, selling things out of my personal closet, but also doing a lot of thrifting and secondhand shopping at like consignment shops and boutiques. So I was making a pretty good, you know, side hustle income, but I didn't have time per se to do it full time because I had a corporate job that was taking up a lot of my time. And even though it was a remote job, you know how it is if you've ever worked remote. Sometimes I feel like they expect you to do even more because you don't, you're not commuting, because you're working from home. They think you just got all this extra time. So I found myself sometimes doing way more and spending more time online for that job than when I was working in a traditional office space, when I worked <clears throat> in the public school system. So. Anyway, I decided to go full time. Once we got that uh, closing confirmation and they, they verified me and my husband's employment, I stopped doing work. Of course I would show up for whatever meetings they had, but they, they just knew, like they knew, don't expect too much from Shay because Shay is here temporarily. She just got laid off. She just trying to get her house. So don't expect too much. I was sitting on meetings, sitting there snacking, eating. Again, I'm pregnant. So I was just doing the very much bare minimum just to get by <laughs> and get that check, get that last. I think I got like two more paychecks. And then I got my severance packet. And I think the severance packet paid for the next maybe four or five months. 
um they give you like four or five months of your salary so that really gave us a cushion once we moved in we used my severance packet to really set us up as far as because you know it's a lump sum of money after taxes so we were able to get you know like the furniture we needed like the starter furniture your starter home and um, pay a lot of the closing costs. Uh, it's a lot of other things that come with, you know, getting a house that you gotta pay for when you first move in. So baby, we used that severance packet really well. We, we made that thing stretch. On top of my husband's salary and on top of me doing my uh, resales, I would get on Instagram Live and do the resales. So shout out to my Good Girl Tribe from Good Girl Stir. For those of you all who remember the days, we would sit on live and we would talk trash and, and sip our wine um, and shop. The, ugh, I miss those days. Not enough to go back, but those are some good days. So boom, back to the entrepreneurship journey. When I started, you know, being a full-time content creator and reseller, I was really just moving off of vibes. Like, I don't think I would even consider myself an entrepreneur because, well, I don't know. Like, back then, I, I would consider myself an entrepreneur now. Like, I'm a business owner now. Yes, ma'am. I got it all, all the paperwork. I got an accountant. I just hired my first uh, team member, like I, I'm doing the thing. But back then, mm, I don't think I should have been like speaking on nobody's panel back then. Like what advice did I have? I was just waking up making content when I felt like it and doing these live sales, going thrifting. I, I had no structure, no order. I think that's a, a big reason why my brand was kind of steadily growing back then versus now. It's I mean, taking off. Like I'm about to hit 400,000 followers any day now. It's crazy. I think I'm at like 394 this morning. Today is, oh duh, February 24th, because today's the panel. So today is February 24th, and I hit 200,000 followers right before my birthday. My birthday is December 16th. So when you do the math, December to January is one month. January to February is two months. So I've doubled my following on Instagram in two months. That's insane. <laughs> Like, and it's not just going from 5K to 10K, going from 200K to 400K is crazy. But is it? No, it's not. Because now I have more strategy, more intention. I'm more confident in my brand than I've ever been. My advice to you all watching this who want to start something or want to go full time, don't wait until you've been just moving off of vibes and energy <laughs> like I was. Like, don't wait the two years. Like, get intentional now. Get serious now. Start running your brand like a true business. And I'm not saying you need to be hiring team members and stuff right now because you might not be in the financial position to do so and you might not need that. Like you you might be able to carry your entire brand on your back and do everything on your own like I was doing. But eventually I realized I cannot do all this on my own or I'm gonna burn out and crash. Like this is, this is not happening. I can't continue to be the creative director, the producer, the editor, the person in front of the camera and behind the camera. I can't do all that. So. I think for full-time entrepreneurship for the first, I would say from October 2021, well really November because I did go back to work for a little bit, but for, yeah, from November 2021 to like, I would say summer 2022, I was just, again, no real strategy. I didn't have management. Well, I got my first manager who I uh, who's negotiating my brand deals and stuff, but that's about it. She wasn't like setting up campaigns for me, like coming to my house, helping me shoot. You know, like I, again, I didn't have like a team team. I just had a manager to negotiate deals and, and pitch me or negotiate deals that I pitched myself. I just think the first year wasn't, to me, it wasn't really getting what I consider true entrepreneurship. You know, time flies. And now here we are, February 2024. So we're talking three years, less than three years later. I can confidently sit on a panel and give real tips, give real advice and speak from a place of experience and not just, oh, I'm out here winging it. Like, no, I've been through some things and yes, I have been winging it for a while, but it's much better now than it has ever been. And I think when it comes to full-time entrepreneurship, there's this allure to it right like people want it they want the freedom they want the money they want the success of it all they want they want the bragging right but they don't really want to do the work <laughs> and that's what i'm realizing now even about myself like i wanted to work for myself but baby i held on to that job until they let me go because deep down i really didn't want to do the work like i was working i was doing the, the work that I felt like doing, but showing up for yourself, like you show up for a, a different company, like creating and pouring into your brand, like you do a nine to five, the average person does not feel like doing that because it's, it's a lot and it's tiring. Let's be honest. And when I say it's tiring, I don't just mean it's physically tiring because that's just one aspect, like getting up at the crack of dawn to work out, do my hair, record this video, get my child up, prepare her, go to this panel, 
all of that is already tiring, especially because I didn't go to bed till 11.30 p.m. So right now I'm running off maybe five hours of sleep. So yes, entrepreneurship full time is tiring physically, but it's also mentally and emotionally draining because when you're not making money in the beginning, what exactly is going to keep you going? <laughs> like when the money's not coming, when the people aren't showing up, when you don't have the views or you don't have the sales, you know, whatever you're doing, whether you're selling a physical product, you're selling a service or you're, you're selling content, you're selling your lifestyle. When the views and the numbers just aren't there in the beginning, it just gives crickets. But you have to keep going. You literally have to keep going as if your brand is doing these insane numbers when nobody is watching but your cousin, your best friend, and your mom and them. Like, it's very humbling. And most people don't want to be humbled. And I don't blame y'all. Because, like, what? Why you want to humble me, Lord? Like, oh, Jesus, why? Help me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to go back down to zero at least when you was at your job you might have got a little promotion you know you might have got a little employee of the week maybe you had your own desk your own cubicle your own your own office space you got a plaque for hitting your goals like ain't nobody coming to give you a plaque when you hit your own personal goals for your brand ain't nobody uh shouting you out at the team meeting because you ain't got no team like working for yourself is hard i get it i understand completely and wholeheartedly why people would just rather or they don't know, but why people should rather stay at their job. Like I'm telling you right now. So if you're somebody who's on the fence right now and you're thinking like, mm, should I go full time or should I pursue full time entrepreneurship? Maybe, but maybe not. Like maybe it's okay if you have like passion projects and side hustles that bring you extra income without fully committing. Because again, it sounds good, right? The, the end result, but most people don't want to do the work because Sometimes the work sucks and it's not rewarding, but that's okay. It's okay for you to get that gratification for doing a good job from a job, if that makes sense. Like, it's totally fine for you to feel fulfilled building someone else's dream. I'm, I'm really tired of the narrative, and this is ironic because I'm about to go speak on a panel about entrepreneurship, black women in entrepreneurship. So this is ironic that I'm saying this, but I, I feel led always to speak from the heart. and. I also have to be responsible with my platform and I don't know who's watching this. So if you're someone like me that's like, I'm never going back to work, cool. But for the rest of y'all who are on the fence, maybe you're on the fence for a reason. It could be because you just need some motivation, you being lazy or you just stuck in a rut right now. It could be because of that and you're gonna come out of it, you're gonna come out on top. Or it could be because you're just meant to stay where you're at and climb the corporate ladder or the ladder in education or I don't know, if you're in the service industry, maybe you're meant to run that restaurant. Maybe you're meant to one day own that hotel. I don't know, but I just want you to know that it like success doesn't always have to mean you built something you're sustaining it on your own or with a team and it's yours that's great but success can also mean you help build someone else's dream and they value you and they appreciate you and you have a work-life balance and you're making money enough money to feed your family take care of yourself and, and travel and see the world or even if you don't like to travel like if you just like to go out in your local city like whatever your personal goals are if you have a good job that allows you to live and not just live to pay bills paying bills is just like an afterthought like you're doing well for yourself or you're maintaining child hold on to that job especially in this economy okay because let me tell you there is nothing like being able to clock in and clock out and can't nobody bother you <laughs> over the weekend all right or can't nobody tell you nothing once you're off the clock there's nothing like it and of course i'm figuratively speaking because a lot of you might be on salary where there's not a traditional clock in clock out maybe you do work from home sometimes or your boss or your supervisor might hit you up after hours on the weekend but Either way, it's going to be more personal freedom than entrepreneurship. So that's my advice for those of you who are on the fence with, oh, come on, Bob. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you got to hype yourself up sometimes. That's my advice for people who are on the fence. Now, because I'm about to go speak on a whole panel during Black History Month about women entrepreneurship and Women's History Month is about to be in a couple of days, I got to speak to entrepreneurs, especially black women entrepreneurs or aspiring ones. If you really want this lifestyle, because again, entrepreneurship is an entire lifestyle. It is not just something you can pick up and sit back down between the hours of nine to five. It will become your life. If you really want it, I need you to look at it as an end all be all. Like there is no plan B. There is no backup. There is no, like, this is how I'm going to put food on the table for my family. And if you ain't got no family or you ain't got nobody that you're responsible for but yourself, this is how I'm going to feed myself. This is how I'm going to create uh, future wealth for my legacy. Like, 
This is how I'm going to survive. Like I need you to get in survival mode. And I know it sounds bad because we don't want to be stressed and struggling. Like nobody wants to feel that way. But you got to have like a certain level of discipline. I'm saying this from experience because honey, I didn't have discipline when I first started, clearly. Again, I told y'all I was just posting when I felt like it. And yeah, I was consistent, but there was really no strategy, not much looking into data and research, just going off of feelings. And you can't run a business off of feelings. You gotta run a business off of intention and strategy. So if this is something you really want. First of all, you need to never be the smartest person in the room. Like sis, get yourself a mentor. And if you can't hire a mentor or, I mean, I feel like you shouldn't have to hire a mentor, but if you if you can't like hire a coach or you don't know anybody in your circle or tribe or just in your vicinity that does what you want to do and at a high level, start consuming the content of that person, whether it's the content they put out on LinkedIn. And when I say that person, I mean several different people in the field that you want to be successful in, whether it's lifestyle content creation, whether it's real estate, starting your own therapy com uh, company or organization, some type of agency, like whatever it is you want to do, you're in the beauty industry, you do hair and nails, whatever it is you want to do, find the people who are doing it at the height that you want to get to and study them. Not study them to copy, but, but study them to emulate in an organic way that's organic to you and your brand, you know? So for me, I love watching content creators that have 1.5 million followers or that are bringing in, you know, 100,000 a month from their Amazon store, or their LTK, because that's something I want to do. And when I say I study them, I'm not saying I study them to copy them. I look at what they're doing for inspiration, but I also look at what they're not doing so that I can go in and fill the gaps. So for example, a big part of my content is like self-care and taking care of yourself as a mom, finding yourself again after giving birth and getting your confidence back with your style and elevated casual, like how to be comfortable but still cute. So if I see other creators who do similar content as I do, I'm going to see like what they're not doing. So that's how I actually started the Elevated Casual series that's been doing numbers and, and that really helped me grow my platform. I, I want to attest the Elevated Casual series, the style and spa I've been doing, like that's that's one of the main reasons my platform has doubled because I saw a gap. I, I follow so many amazing, awesome creators, especially black women creators in my space that do marriage, motherhood, self-care style, all the things that I love. But I noticed like, wow, everybody is just dressed to the nines. Everybody is hair, makeup done, showing up as their best selves. Everybody looks good. But if I'm going down their pages, there might be 10 to 15 posts before I see like a casual look that is still slaying. And that's no shade to them because maybe that's just something they don't want to do. I love when the girlies get all dressed up and go to dinner or you know what I'm saying, or go to brunch. Like I love that. But I also know that that's not realistic for the average person. The average person might be working two jobs in this economy. The average person might be tired because they got three kids that they got to go home and cook for. Like the average person just wants to look decent when they go run their errands. And that's how I started the series. I realized there's not a lot of big time content creators or big time influencers that are really pressed to show slaying their casual looks. That was the gap that I wanted to step in and fill. And it's working tremendously. Now, before you get started, please do not start dropping all the pages of the big time content creators with a million followers that do cute casual looks. Cause I know that they're out there, but I'm just telling you what my algorithm brings me, okay? And I don't know if it's because my algorithm just knows that I love to dress up and be fancy. Maybe that's it. I love a good date night. I'm always posting, you know, going out in my high heels, looking cute in a dress and a skirt. Maybe the algorithm just always shows me what I post. But when I went to look for some elevated casual looks, I didn't really see too much. And when I did, I saw it on like a high level, like that New York street style. I love those pages. Oh my God. Like the girls who give that edge, that grunge, like they might have a full face of makeup, but they got on combat boots, uh, a biker jacket in a jersey like they're just they're just doing a lot and they just have all these nice layers like the street style is clearly their thing and they might have exclusive sneakers on like I feel like there's a genre for that and then there's a genre for really dressy high heels classy top of the line top notch looks but it's like edgy streetwear super duper girly like where is the middle where where is again this was the gap that I saw like where are the girls who are girly girls but also want to wear a sneaker you know what I'm saying like where are the girls who love the hill but 
they're probably interested in a kitten heel because they got millennial knees like me. I'm an older millennial, you know what I'm saying? I was born in 89. So again, when you are thinking about your content or whatever ads you need to run in marketing for your business, start thinking about where are the gaps that you can fill. Stop thinking about what you don't see. Stop getting so caught up in all of the content you feel like is doing so well. Your content is trash and you know how y'all get when y'all y'all let imposter syndrome take over. We're all guilty of it. Comparison is a thief of joy and we start looking at other people and thinking like wow their style is so dope or I love their makeup. I love their nails. I love their skincare. Like I love their house. You start comparing all the stuff that you don't have. What aren't they doing that you can bring value in? Like. What space are they not filling where you can throw your value in that space and you can talk to your audience and, and, and open up a whole new world of content to them? Like that, that's, the, that's the type of mindset I need you to have. And again, it's not gonna happen overnight. <laughs> Nothing happens overnight. I've done plenty of style series before, honey. Like I've done, who you name it, I've tried it. Especially when I had my Good Girls Thrift page. I did thrifting for Valentine's Day, I did a whole countdown, thrifting for holiday outfits, wedding guest outfits, I've done it all. And while all of those were great, <laughs> you know, it, I added value in that space, nothing hit like my kitten heels and cargos and elevated casual, okay? Like my airport fits, like the things I'm doing now, it's taking it up a notch, it's taking it to the next level. And you know the crazy part? It's a low effort for me. Like me doing wedding guest inspo or bachelorette vacation inspo that takes a lot more because if i'm showing wedding guest inspiration baby i need to be in a whole dress a gown makeup done hair done like but if i'm showing you cozy cute fits for the airport i literally can just do my skincare and not have a stitch of makeup on and throw on the fit and go which is what i did i literally had a flight to catch and I'll, I'll put the video right here for you to see. Did my skincare routine after the shower, put my hair down, and literally threw on the airport fit that I was wearing and I, and I dipped. And then took a clip from when I was on the plane. Threw it together when I got to my destination and posted it. Like, and it's, the video did numbers. Like, what? <laughs> now mind you, when I was at home choreographing a whole production, you know, hair, makeup, 17 different looks. Like, I'm, I'm giving the girls looks. It may perform okay, but what I realized is that type of content wasn't filling the gap. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that Elevated Casual is not out there. But for my audience, for whatever reason, child, they're gravitating towards this Elevated Casual series because the algorithm hasn't been bringing them those type of looks. I just want to encourage you that, especially if you're a content creator, it may take a little bit of time, but you got to keep putting out different types of content until something sticks. Like keep throwing stuff at the wall. Something's going to stick. And when it comes to full-time entrepreneurship, I, I speak a lot from the lens, obviously, of wanting to be a full-time content creator, but I know other people watching this, maybe they don't want to be a full-time influencer or content creator. Maybe they, maybe they have a business or service, but whatever it is, the ideas that I'm saying, it applies to everything. When I say that you can't run your brand or your marketing, your ads, or whatever you need to do for your business off of feelings and vibes, you have to have data and strategy and intention. That goes for every single thing. It doesn't matter what you tell me you wanna do right now. I don't care if you wanna start your own veterinary in practice, a real estate agency, or you wanna start a record label, like it doesn't matter. You're gonna to have to make some type of content, whether you're making it on LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, you're running ads on your own website, or you know, throughout Google, it just doesn't matter. You're gonna to have to use the internet and you're gonna to have to use the tips that I'm giving. So again, if you're serious, this needs to be your end all be all. You need to come from a place of, there is no backup plan, there is no BC, like it's just plan A, we're going with it. And we may have to pivot, we may have to switch up some things, and try a little harder, put more effort here, less effort there. Like we may have to change and move move with the punches, roll with the punches, but we're never giving up. Like bash is that, never. Okay y'all, so it is almost nine o'clock. Yep, it's 8.51. My mom should be here soon. I just changed and just threw on this bodysuit. I don't like to be in something where I have to take it, you know, over my head to take it off and change. So when I come back and get my makeup done, I think I have like 30 minutes to get ready. So I may be able to record like I get ready with me for that. I kind of wanted to do that for Instagram and TikTok and YouTube shorts, but mm, it just depends because I think the Uber is coming to pick Jeremiah and I up at 12. The makeup appointment is at 10. I should be done getting my makeup done by 11. It's a 30 minute commute. We gonna see. But I already have my clothes already laid out and I'm excited because I'm wearing black designers today. Well, not head to toe, but my dress will be by Terrell Dominic. My necklace will be by, I forgot, Imani Jewelry? I'm not, I'll, I'll link everything for you. And of course, you know, I always tag stuff on my Instagram. But yeah, 
So just th the fact that I'm about to go speak on this panel, y'all, oh my gosh, like I, I'm hyped. I'm really hyped. I'm gonna let, you know, the Lord speak through me because I don't know who's gonna be in the room. It, again, I don't even know who's watching this video. It could be people who are gung-ho about starting their full-time brand or going full-time with their business. Be people who are just on the fence. So that's why I try to give both sides, give multiple perspectives. Because, you know, life is not one size fits all. It's not a cookie cutter. Everyone's situation is different. It's very much case by case. All right, oh, Gigi's up. She's turning up in her crib. Yeah, I'm gonna go get her up and get her some breakfast started before my mom gets here. Okay, I'm excited, y'all. Let the day begin. Who's that? <gasps> Who's that pretty girl? away from home there's an uber coming to pick me and jeremiah up at 12 so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to record like uh get ready with me like i wanted to for instagram and uh you know tiktok youtube shorts you know how i do my short form content and i i repost it on all platforms i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do that um and if i do i might just have to do a silent video where i'm not talking just some footage and i'll lay a voiceover over it later but love my face uh, robin just gets me like she she's been doing my makeup for so long that she understands my angles my features i think well, sometimes when we jump around to different um beauty beauty how do i say beauty beauty service providers yeah like hair nails face like you don't really get to grow with the provider to learn them their style as things change, as you know, my face has changed as far as like, sometimes I might be a little heavier. My features may look a little different. If a person can provide a service to you over time and really learn your face or learn your hair, or you know what I'm saying? Learn what you like and grow with you. I think that makes the perfect hairstylist or the perfect MUA, the perfect nail tech. So I try to keep all of my people the same if I can, you know? Oh child, I am trying not to speed. I don't need no ticket. Anyways, oh my gosh, I keep saying I'm excited about this panel, y'all, but I really am because one of my goals for 2024 is to get more into public speaking. Clearly, I'm just sharing all kind of fun facts in this vlog. Fun fact number probably 47, <laughs> if you didn't already know. I went to school for broadcasting, you know, communications, broadcast journalism. That was what I got my bachelor's in. And when it came to mass communications, I really wanted to use my degree to become a news reporter. Like even since, I think like I, I was a junior in high school, I did like this little program where they took us to the different news stations and radio stations. So I just always envisioned myself as a news reporter, like reporting live, you know, just the whole shebang. And then I ended up doing an internship in college and then shadowing some reporters. And I'm not gonna lie, I hated it. It wasn't what, all what it was cracked up to be. And then I learned other things like how long it takes a reporter to like climb the ranks of like the top, you know, syndicated news reporting show and you know, how you might have to go to the middle of nowhere in ran a random town in Milwaukee or, you know, like you just might end up getting placed somewhere where you don't actually want to be but that's the station that needs a, a news reporter at that time because if you think about it when it comes to news reporters most journalists they they grow with the station they don't they don't hop around too too much well once they're like you know settled into their career they're stationed it's their home station so if it's gonna be their home station they're gonna be there for a while unless they you know have a life change they get married they move away but for the most part think about our childhood we grew up seeing the, the local news reporters and it was a thing you know they stayed so when it comes to trying to get your feet in the door you might have to go to a local news station that just has a vacancy has an opening and I really wasn't trying to do all that like I wanted to be wherever I wanted to live and I knew that if I chose this career it wasn't necessarily gonna be up to me so that was one factor and then on top of that I just felt like dang the news is real depressing like 
the stuff that we're reporting on well not me because you know i was in college i was just interning but when as i was shadowing reporters and working on things behind the scenes in the newsroom i'm like wow that's a lot of negativity like they don't really like report on good news and obviously because good news doesn't sell like bad news <laughs> you know it's it's not called breaking news for no reason so I felt like, dang, they're just reporting on all this crime and this sad stuff. Every once in a while, a good story comes of positivity, but it just gave, we're here to report the trauma. And I hated that. I'm not somebody who likes to dwell in the negative at all. If you can't tell by now, I'm very much positive patty. So that was another thing I didn't like. Um, and then I just, I don't know, I had a change of heart. I just didn't, I didn't think I wanted to be a news reporter anymore. So long story short, I ended up getting into education, working in higher ed, which I loved, and then going into the K through 12 space of secondary education, and then on to ed tech or tech ed, whatever you wanna call it. So I said that to say, deep down, my foundation has always been speaking and public speaking, because obviously if you're gonna do anything with journalism, communications, reporting, you're gonna be talking. So that has really been a big beacon of what's helped me throughout my content creator journey and you know establishing myself and establishing my career as an influencer being able to talk on camera being able to do this I think a lot of people well I know a lot of people struggle with it because I always get questions like how do you talk so freely on camera and my like, girl I went to school for this and not not just that because you can go to school for a lot of things you're not good at I've always had um, just this natural urge to talk <laughs> I love talking to people I love talking I think maybe because like I wasn't an only child like I do have an older brother but we're eight years apart so when I was in like the third grade uh, my dad was in the military so we moved around a lot and when I was in yeah third grade well I finished my third grade year we ended up moving to another state and my brother had just graduated high school so he was like nah I'm trying to stay with my friends I already got a job I'm not really trying to go with y'all so he stayed in that state and then we moved to Virginia then from the third grade, well, from the summer of third grade on up, I, I was alone. Like, I, I barely saw my brother. He was back in Louisiana. That was the state that we were in before. So I was forced to, like, make friends and have to do a lot of talking and talk to myself. Like, I used to, you know, like I was a kid. I had imaginary friends. I would, I would play house and play with toys and just be alone. It was kind of sad. But I will say that it helped me. It helped me grow into a good talker because if you, it was either, like, talk to people and make friends um or be alone because you ain't got no siblings here you know and your parents are always at work like my, my dad was in the military and he was a pastor my mom worked sometimes two jobs so yeah i think that that's a big piece of why i have found such passion in content creation because i get to talk to people and i get to just do this like get on camera and talk and edit and make my videos and that's that's pretty much what I went to school for that was what my, what my passion was and I think it's also a testament to you know sometimes the journey that we're on it the, the end of that journey or I mean the journey never ends but uh, the height the plateau like you know what you're working towards it might not look exactly how you envisioned it you know like I didn't envision becoming a full-time content creator because when I was in college that wasn't really a thing like I started college in 2008 and I graduated in 2012. There weren't, you know, ads and um, a, a bunch of marketing put into influencers like it is now. Back then it was organic, you know, that was the age of the, the organic influence of, you know, the YouTubers that were just starting out. People weren't doing paid campaigns, you know, that wasn't a thing. Traditional marketing was around back then and it still is to this day, but you know, the age of influencer marketing has taken over now and I would have never thought that I could do that back then because it just wasn't a thing. So I think that's just a testament to how God works. You could be grinding so hard for something, whether you're in college pursuing a certain degree like I was, or you know, you're already in the workforce, you know, maybe you're already in your career and you're trying to get a certification or you're trying to pivot and get into a new role or another department, maybe get a promotion, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do or get some type of licensure, your journey might not end up how you envisioned it you know but you'll still end up using those same skills and gifts things that were implemented into you and that were given to you you'll still end up using them I'm right now using the skills that I learned from my mass communications degree program even though I am not actively using my degree if that makes sense and then when I think about my career as a counselor in high school 
I think about all the lives that I touch, you know, the, the kids that I got to work with and mentor and having my master's degree in education, I'm not using it right now. It's collecting dust, you know, on the shelf per se, but the skills that I learn as a counselor, having to mentor kids, having to really pour into their lives and listen to them and just have empathy, the social skills that I built in working in education. I mean, I use all of that now as a content creator. So again, I wanna encourage you watching this video right now because you may be going through a lot with your current job or whatever position or it's just something that you're doing and you may be thinking like, yo, what is all this for? Like, I'm not even gonna use this later. I wanna do this and I'm doing this and it doesn't correlate, but I'm telling you, if it's a part of your purpose, it will correlate. It may sound like two totally different genres, being a high school counselor and being a, an influencer and full-time content creator, but the two careers definitely overlap. Or being a, a news reporter or a journalist and creating content, there are skills that will overlap. There are a lot of transferable skills in whatever you're doing right now that will serve you in your higher purpose, that will serve you once you get into the position that God has for you where God is gonna place you on that pedestal to do what you love and get paid to do what you love, you will start to see, wow, all those long hours and that time that I spent where I was miserable, it was for a reason. <laughs> Trust me, like you're, you're gonna start to see it come to pass if you're not already seeing it right now. So again, that's just some fun facts for you. And let me know in the comments how you're feeling this vlog of like me doing activities and taking you along with me on my day while also dropping gems and giving advice because I'm trying to figure out like how can I vlog without it being boring like I don't want to just be like hey I'm going to get my makeup done hey I'm going to go drive to the store and I'm not talking to y'all and it's just music although those vlogs are, are great I like to watch those I don't think that they will perform well on my channel because I'm kind of still I'm not new to YouTube but I am new to long form content on YouTube because I, I have never posted long form content consistently so I feel like people who don't know me they're going to be like who is this and why are we going to the store with her like you know <laughs> like I feel like I need to be adding some type of value oh sorry I'm trying to change lanes because whenever there's a cop behind me I get so much anxiety hold on let me get away from him okay he's gone but yeah like I was saying I don't think that like me just running errands with y'all I mean let me know would you like to see that me just running errands and not really talking much or talking you through through my errands like would that be cool to watch I don't know child I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out because I don't have that many long form videos on YouTube. You know, I've grown my subscriber count mostly off of YouTube shorts. And then I do have some videos that have done well, which is like my advice on how to become an influencer, how to become a full time paid content creator. But again, I don't want to get stuck in that box. So I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone to do long, more long form videos and vlogs like this. But I still want to make it authentic and true to me. And it wouldn't be me if I wasn't giving some type of advice, dropping gems, you know, give you a little something extra. Just let me know how you're enjoying this. Do you like this format? Or would you just like me to shut up and drive and throw some music on? I don't know. Let me know. Making good time, y'all. GPS says, I don't know why I still use GPS to get everywhere. I am a child. <laughs> But GPS says we'll get there at 11.33, so that's good. I already got my clothes laid out. We might have time for a quick, get ready, who knows? I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this drive in silence and just mentally prepare and meditate on what I wanna say on this panel today. I'm gonna put a pause on this and then i see you when I'm at the house. Okay, I made it back home. My room is a mess right now. I'm gonna try my best to shoot this short form content. Um, you know, I gotta do a vertical way stuff. Maybe I can let y'all see how I record. Maybe I can do that. Let me see if I can set this up. Like them, it 
gotta work for me Just cause I haunt you don't mean I want you, I don't You got some high hopes High hopes is a millennial mom, wife, and former high school counselor turned content creator. She currently resides in Houston, Texas, but is a Virginia native and proud HBCU graduate. So a toast to that, Black Excellence. As a new Sephora Squad ambassador, she uses her content to inspire and motivate others while always uplifting her community. It encourages women to build their confidence through personal style and self-care. So welcome Shay Regis to the Vibe Lounge stage. My platform to spotlight Black-owned businesses, specifically female Black-owned businesses. Like I shout out my Black beauty providers and also doing collaborations, making content, and bringing awareness to all the amazing Black women entrepreneurs that I get to meet on a daily. And I'm blessed to be able to be in this position, to have a platform, to show spotlight. Well, first of all, thank you for coming. Shout out to my good girl tribe. Sometimes we have to separate our feelings when it comes to what we want to do versus logic. And of course, we need to be obedient to God. But at the same time, we also need to get our house in order. So if you're still working your nine to five and you want to step into fashion and you know that's going to be your your passion project turn career then you need to start crunching some numbers sis you need to look to see what are my expenses right now uh what can sustain me for the next six months so when i do go full-time god forbid something happens i have my savings account to fall back on so i think sometimes it's not just about our passion our love for style but it's also can we run the numbers and does it does it financially make sense because if right now, if you can sustain your nine to five while also making content on the weekends, batch content creating, and then you know maybe in the next six months you stack your savings where you could live off of that for six months while you're trying to get your style content off the ground, I think you should do it. But then if you start crunching numbers, you see the math's not math, and you might have to say, all right, Lord, maybe I need to pick up a side hustle. A lot of people don't know. I was doing Uber Eats while working in the public school system. I was working at HISD. Shout out to Cashmere High School. Uh, I was a yeah, I was a, co a college counselor while also doing uh, my style content and also doing. Uber Eats and Postmates and DoorDash and I was tired but I knew it was temporary and God sowed a seed in me and I had to water it and watch it blossom and be patient while also crunching the numbers so I want you to of course still feed your passion you look amazing so clearly style is not an issue but go back home look at your account look at them bills you know what I'm saying and start get you a spreadsheet going and start saying to yourself is this realistic for me not just to do this for six months or two years but for the rest of my life can I support myself and my current or future family all right, y'all, that's a wrap. The panel was a success. It was very hot, okay? The, as I was on stage, the sun was right here, beating on my face. As you can see, my makeup is like sweated off. It's probably more makeup on my sunglasses than on my face right now. <laughs> but, um, you wanna say hi, baby? Say hi. <laughs> Today was amazing. Shout out to the Me versus Me movement. Shout out to DJ Michelle. Hey, it was beautiful. Thank you so much for having us. It was so great to network with the other women on the panel and just be in a space of black women entrepreneurship. 10 out of 10 recommend. Thank y'all for watching the vlog and I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Good night. Say bye bye, Gigi. Say bye bye. <laughs> bye y'all.